Hello, I'm Wayne from Talk Cars. In this video, we're going to be looking at performance exhausts. Now, the job of the exhaust system is to take the hot air from the engine and spit it out the back of the car. But also, it muffles the sound of the engine. If you didn't have a well-designed exhaust and you just literally had a pipe coming out of the engine, it would be unbearably loud. And you'd also have some performance issues depending on the design and structure of the exhaust. So we're just going to talk about some of the principles. There's a massive common misconception that bigger exhausts flow better. We're going to be discussing that in detail. And we're going to look at some of the things to think about when getting a sports exhaust on your car, how to get a good one. So when it comes to sports exhausts on cars, you want to maximise the flow rate. Now, when you're watering the garden, just take the end off the hose so you've got quite a large area and you'll notice the water just trickles out. It, it doesn't go very far. As soon as you add the restriction of that nozzle, your water goes further. So the flow rate increases as the bore size decreases. Now think very carefully about that. What happens in an engine, you want the exhaust gases to flow as quickly as possible out of the engine. If it's not flowing quickly, you won't get a complete evacuation of all of those exhaust fumes within the engine. So they call this a scavenging effect. So as the engine fires and pushes out the exhaust gases and they, they flow out, if they flow too slowly, your cylinder still has some of that combustion gases left in it as it fills up for the next time. So ideally what you want in an engine it's an exhaust that can change its shape depending on the RPM of the engine. Now, a few manufacturers have actually come up with clever systems that adjust the bore. They've got little chambers that open up a higher RPM, which increases the flow rate. But it also maintains a good flow rate at low RPM. There's always a compromise when it comes to flow rate and exhaust. But larger exhausts do not equal more power. A lot of people have come to us, they put a big three inch exhaust on a relatively small engine and they just feel the car is worse to drive, it's got lower low down power and they, they wonder what's gone wrong because they feel they've got the best exhaust they can get. And actually it's this effect of decreasing the flow rate of the exhaust. So think very much about the flow rate of the exhaust. Bigger is not always better. What you want to avoid in an exhaust are hard edges, sudden changes in, in size. You, you really want everything to be trumpeted to aid the flow of the air. Anything that's not flat and gives you a, a step will create turbulence and that will slow up the airflow. Now to muffle the sound, there's a few ways that this can be accomplished within an exhaust. So the most common way is just to put some sort of sound deadening material that the exhaust gases flow through. Now that obviously creates a restriction. The exhaust gases are not flowing as freely because they've got to get around all of this sound deadening material. So in a sports exhaust, they've got an internal chamber and an external chamber. The internal chamber has got holes in. Now some of the sound goes through those small holes and bounces off the big chamber and that creates a noise cancellation effect, reducing the sound. But very little happens to the flow rate of the exhaust, so that's a very clever setup. A well-designed exhaust can offer a little more performance, but you only get a performance benefit with a performance exhaust if you've got a restriction in your system. If you're not reducing a restriction and aiding the flow rate you will notice no benefit at all so if the only mod you've done to your car is a sports exhaust it's not going to be any better than it would have been without that sports exhaust there's a few exceptions some manufacturers have fitted very bad exhaust systems to their cars um, but in the main they know what they're doing they've got to ensure that the cars are economical and efficient and they spend millions in research and development of their exhaust systems so you won't go far wrong with the standard exhaust on a standard car. If you've increased the power, you may well have introduced a restriction somewhere in the system. If you're getting flat spots, then look at exhaust flow rates and see if we can improve flow rates by adding better designed exhaust system. Exhaust headers are quite critical as well. They take the exhaust fumes directly from the cylinders and you've got different branch setups. You can go from a four into a two into a one. Some cars go from a four into a two and have twin exhausts coming out. 
all of those things and the lengths have a big impact on performance. So there's a lot of science involved in specifying exhausts. And when the exhaust runners are not of the same length, you can get some really nice engine sounds. The Subaru Impreza boxer engine is one of my favorites. Most of that sound comes from the way that the exhaust is designed because the end is a flat boxer layout. So the pipes travel quite differently to how they would in a standard inline bore engine. So the internal structure of the exhaust is also important. Stainless steel is quite smooth, that flows really well. If you've got cast iron in the exhaust headers, which is quite common for a lot of manufacturers, it will be full of little imperfections and dents and grooves. You really want that part of the exhaust to be smooth, to get rid of the turbulence. You've got a lot of heat going into the exhaust headers, so you really need something substantial that can handle that heat. If your car's got a turbo fitted as well, the exhaust design is critical because that flows directly into the turbo, which is where you get most of your power. So you want an efficient grant design. Most exhausts now come with some sort of pollution controls. We've got DPFs, diesel particulate filters. We've got catalysts, which create a reaction inside them that reduces the harmful emissions. All of those pollution controls will restrict the flow of the car to some extent, but manufacturers have generally done a pretty good job. They make these filters larger than the typical bore of the exhaust, so you don't lose very much at all. It's illegal to remove those pollution controls in pretty much every country in the state nowadays. So there are performance alternatives that flow better. Usually they've got larger cells, or they're larger overall, so more exhaust gases will flow through them for any given time. And some of those performance catalysts will actually perform very similarly to removing the cat altogether. They are that good, so we don't have to drive an illegal car. We can just get a performance part that does the job. So we hope that this is giving you a little insight into the world of performance exhaust. There's certainly a lot there. We're going to cover exhaust in a much more detailed article in future. Um, but we just want to get across some of the basic common pitfalls and problems and the urban myths that a lot of people think about when they go and buy a performance exhaust. And we really don't want you to be coming to us saying, I've got a problem with my car after I've added a performance exhaust, just because no one took the time to explain to you what these common pitfalls and problems are that you need to look out for. So see you in the next video. Please subscribe if you haven't done so. And don't forget to like.